Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're all doing well. In today's tutorial, we're going to tie the horn knot. More specifically, we're going to tie the 3 pass type 1 horn knot, which is the smallest of the horn knot series of knots. You can think of this knot as a herringbone knot that is interwoven using a pineapple knot. As such, it is a bit bulkier in the center, making it ideal for covering oval objects. As far as supplies go, you're going to need a mandrel, then you're going to need one longer cord to tie the herringbone knot, and one shorter one to interweave a pineapple knot into the center of the knot, and you're also going to need a lacing needle. So with these supplies ready, let's move on to tying the herringbone knot. You can see my mandrel and cord here, and the first thing we're going to do is tie a 5 part 4 byte Turk's head. So after the initial wrap around, we're going to take our end and go under, over, towards the left side. We're then going to come around and double up our standing end, going under, over. Then, from right to left, we're going to start a new sequence, going over, under, over. We are now going to split the two parallel cords that we set up earlier. So here. And we're going to start with an over, then under and over. And we're going to split another set of parallel cords. And from right to left, we're going to go under, over, under, and over. At this point, we have tied a 5 part 4 byte Turk's head. Now, if you wanted to use a new color, you would finish your cord by placing your working end to the right side of the standing end. But I'm going to use the same color, so I'm going to pass over towards the left side of my standing end, and I'm then going to start a sequence of under, over, under, over and under. We exit our knot on the right side. Then we're going to continue by entering the knot with an under again. Since we exit with an under, we always start with an under. Then go over, under, over, and under too. We're going to continue using the same sequence and we're going to go under, over, under, over, and under too. Now from right to left, we're going to start a new sequence of under, over, under, then over two, and under two. And we're now going to repeat our sequence from left to right, starting with an under, then go over and under, then go over two and under two. We're now going to start a new sequence, coming from right to left. We're going to start with an under, then go over, under two, over two, and under two. We're going to repeat the same sequence again, so we're going to start with an under, then go over, under two, over two, 
then over two and under two. And with this we came to our last pass. The final sequence is quite easy. We're going to re-enter the knot with an under. Then we're going to continue with an over two, under two, over two, and under two. At this point, we have exited the knot, and we're now going to place our working end next to our standing end. So we're going to travel alongside our standing end, and this finishes our two pass herringbone knot. We're now going to interweave it into a type 1 horn knot. As you can see, I have attached a second cord onto the left side of my standing end, and I'm going to start my sequence with an under 4. As you can see, I came to a crossing of two cords, and I'm now going to continue with an over 2 and under 2. Then we're going to start a new sequence going under two, over two, and under two. And we're going to repeat the same sequence again. So start with an under two, then go over two, and under two. We're now going to start a new sequence, which is going to be an under three, then over two and under two. And we're going to repeat the same sequence again, going under three, then over two and under two. Then we're going to switch to a new sequence, going under three, over three, and under two. And we're going to repeat the same sequence one more time. So we're going to start with an under three, then over three, and under two. And we are now at our final sequence, which is again really easy. So it's an under three, then over three, and under three. And this will bring us towards our standing end. And to finish the knot, we're going to place our working end on top of our standing end. And this completes our knot. We have tied a type 1 3 pass horn knot. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I do not think it was terribly hard, and it does provide you with excellent options for covering oval objects. Thank you for joining me, and see you next time.